So coming right up on us, that's unusual behavior. Now, what could possibly explain the unusual behavior of sharks that are not scared off by the bubbles suddenly? The urban legend of cocaine-fueled sharks, it turns out, might actually be more than a legend. Just last month, the U.S. Coast Guard seized more than 14,000 pounds of cocaine in the Caribbean Sea and Atlantic Ocean with an estimated value of $186 million. But often, drug smugglers sink their boats before the Coast Guard can capture them, and the cocaine on board ends up in the ocean. Tom, the blowfish herd, is a marine biologist and host for Discovery's Shark Week. All right, Tom, uh, are the sharks then eating the cocaine and now they're not scared by the bubbles? Uh, when we were briefly down in Florida, we did see a lot of interesting behaviors that really open up a lot of, uh, a lot of questions about what's going on. Uh, but one thing we absolutely have to take into very serious account is as you've just pointed out this is an area of the high seas where there is trafficking of these drugs in high volumes and a unique uh entity in the environment for a shark is going to be interesting so we have to consider what happens when a large shark takes a bite out of a big bale of uh colombian marching powder <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, you know, there was Cocaine Bear. That was the, the movie. But I think about the sharks as they're, they're going along. Why are they going to bite this thing wrapped up in duct tape? For a lot of sharks, the, um, their lives are spent waiting. It is always a, a long waiting game, looking for that perfect opportunity to access prey. And... Sharks are intelligent. So, you know, a new thing appears in their environment. They're going to, you know, they're going to nose it. We know for a fact that tiger sharks, for example, have eaten things like pieces of armor, license plates, uh, Donald mm. Trump's hairpiece. You name it, they've munched down on it. All right. So you've got you, God knows how many tons worth of cocaine floating in the waters. While no one has been there and filmed it, the chances that a shark hasn't come along and tried it, tried to bite. Find, did you guys find any cocaine when you were down there swimming around? No, we did not find any cocaine okay. when we were down there. But every single person we spoke to, to a man and a woman, either was directly connected to finding bales or knew someone who had found bales. So it is oh. um, uh, not maybe a daily occurrence, but certainly a weekly, nay, monthly occurrence that these bales wash up. And those are just the ones that wash up. What about the ones that stay out in the ocean? No, no, it's, it's clear there's a lot, there's a lot out there. Um, th this, was, this is a clip from, from the program uh, talking about the chemical imbalance of some of these sharks. Take a listen. You notice how she's swimming? Yeah, it looks like she's slightly on the one side. Almost like she's weighted down. She's not quite level. Now that is unusual. Could be a past injury, or maybe a chemical imbalance. Either way, something to note for sure. All right, so I'm not gonna ask you about if, if you have any personal experience that could, that could help you uh, to explain what might happen to a shark if the shark ingests cocaine. But based on your knowledge, extensive knowledge of marine biology and of the sharks themselves, what are the possible sort of outcomes of a shark taking a big munch out of one of these bales? The possible outcomes, weirdly enough, go one of two ways. We could either have a shark that is absolutely buzzed off its chops, reaching for the lasers, and spinning around the place doing 360s until the sun comes up, or the entire opposite may happen. And we could find that the sharks are actually numbed by the cocaine. We just don't have enough study. And while here with our show, we're looking at this kind of big one-off event of a shark finding a big hit of cocaine in one go, really, we're, we're kind of opening up this idea that actually... Our waters, our coastal waters, and the you know Key Key West and the the waters around Florida are a good example of this. They are being slowly filled with yeah. the drugs that we take, whether they're contraceptives and antibiotics, uh, antidepressants, they're legal painkillers, or they're illicit drugs. So while we may have been looking for that kind of that peak moment of ultimate sharks sort of synchronicity and the Tony Montana full Scarface. <laughs> 
actually uh, this low level of drug induction is happening into our coastal waters and it's something we need to consider because yeah. these these are the fish that then control our ecosystems that control um our climate that go on and come back into our own throats so i mean it, if you fancy a, a cocaine barracuda the florida key west might be the place for you uh, yeah, I feel like it's more and more reasons every year to stay on the beach rather than in the water. Hey, and leave the uh, leave the diving to you, Fish. It was good to have you. Thank you. Congrats on the on the new show. Thanks for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.